we'll you keep find them out in their who homes. these people. No, I never said. I never even heard the term. I'm not going to put them in a detention well, center. Well, you, no. you cited we uh, Dwight Eisenhower. Probably, Mr. Trump, you cited well, Dwight, Eisenhower Dwight Eisenhower on this program. Was a lot. It was in 1952. Right. Who, by the way, deported tremendous numbers. Well, he rounded of them people. up. I mean, he did do that. He took them yeah. out. And so when you cited him as an example of someone that you no, would emulate, said, that's I, I what the that conclusion is. Yeah. I said that it's something that has been done in a very strong manner. I don't agree with that. I'm not talking about detention centers. I have very, very good relationships with a lot of people, a lot of Hispanic people. We're talking about it. We're going to get rid of the bad ones. The bad ones are going to be out of here fast. And you know there are plenty of bad ones. Get Gang sure, leaders. Sure, you absolutely. look at Los Angeles, you see what's happening. Right. They're going out fast. They're going to be out of here so fast, your head will spin. As far as the rest, we're going to go through the process like they are now, perhaps with a lot more energy, and we're going to do it only through the system of laws. Okay. Good. Now, I want, to, I want to play you... And by uh, the way, Bill, that are in existence. I know. I mean, they haven't enforced immigration law since Ronald Reagan in this country. Everybody knows that. Now, let's turn to violent crime. I want to play a short soundbite of what you said uh, recently. Go. The chaos and violence on our streets and the assault on law enforcement are really and truly an attack against all peaceful citizens. If I'm elected president, this chaos and violence will end, and it will end very, very quickly. So how? You have... In Chicago, a problem. It's, did you know that murders in Chicago are up 50 percent this year from last year? I know it. I know <laughs> it very well. And they it's can't. And control. they can't solve it. They can't solve it. State of Illinois, city of Chicago, can't do well, it. Well, you right? know why they can't solve it? Because well, 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 I don't but think no, they I have the right people in charge. So, all right. So specifically, specifically, think, how do you think, do it? How do I, you do it? I know police in Chicago. If they were given the authority to do it, they would get it how? done. How? You have unbelievable... How? By being very much tougher than they are right now. They're right now not tough. I mean, I could tell you this very long and quite boring story, but when I was in Chicago, I got to meet a couple of very top police. I said, how do you stop this? How do you stop this? If you were put in charge to a specific person, do you think you could stop it? He said, Mr. Trump, I'd be able to stop it in one week. And I believed him 100%. How? I Did he tell guy. you how he would be able to stop no, it? No, he just, he wants to use tough, he wants to use tough police tactics. Which would you is have a warrant to arrest people, being people. Killed. You can't beat them up. You have to have a warrant to arrest them. You have to have... All I know is this. I went to a top police officer in Chicago who is not the police chief. And he, I could see, by the way, he was dealing with his people. He was a rough, tough guy. They respected him greatly. I said, how do you think you do it? He said, Mr. Trump, within one week, we could stop much of this. But he didn't tell you exactly, precisely how. Because that's no, and I didn't ask him because I'm not the mayor of Chicago. But I tell you what, I sent his name in and I said, you probably should hire this guy because you have, you know the expression, you have nothing to lose? Look at what's going on in Chicago. It's horrible. This guy felt totally confident that he could stop it in a very short period of time. So it's nationwide. It's a little bit like we could win the war a lot quicker if we'd let our generals do the job properly. This was a man But you, but you have to have a strategy, though. What I'm trying to get is you have yeah, to have well, a strategy. I'm sure he's got a strategy. Okay, but you're, you're going to be, just if you're president, you're going to have to have your strategy. So let's just take a very oh, have, micro oh, okay. issue. Attacks on police, all right? So they're rising because uh, they're being, um, they're, police officers in some places are being demonized, and, and now uh, unstable people, people are saying. people are being coddled. Okay. People All right. are being so you're president. How are you going to stop attacks on police in the present climate? Well, first of all, we need somebody that's going to be a cheerleader for the police to an extent. Right now, I just left the Akron police and some other people, and they are terrific people, and they feel like they're being left behind by our leadership. They're not being respected by our leadership, and they literally, they, they don't have spirit. They lose their spirit. Every time something happens, it's All right, the so, police's so fault. Look, your tone is pro-police. You have to have... Well, you how, have do you, to how do you stop the bad guys spirit. from attacking them? By giving them back your spirit and by allowing them to go and counterattack. I mean, it's ridiculous what's happening. They're not respecting the police anymore, and the police afraid to do anything. I've spoken to so many police. I mean, I've gotten to know them. I have endorsements from like almost everybody in terms of police and law enforcement. And I've spoken to so many and they're afraid to do anything because they don't want to lose their job.